Morning tribe, welcome to the HD Design to Crochet HTDC channel. I'm Heather, your host. I'm 28, coming from Leicester in the United Kingdom. Just going to do the British thing and say the weather's been so nice, it's so sunny, and I can't wait to get back out there. Um, if you're a returning viewer, welcome back. And if you are a new subscriber, hello and thank you for joining me today. Um, I have had a big increase in new followers, new subscribers, and I'm almost at the 200 mark, so that feels really, really good. Um, really, really excited about that. I am doing a giveaway for reaching 100 um, subscribers. You can go back, that was two vlogs ago now, um, and there is a giveaway involved. I'm going to be announcing that winner next weekend because the item I'm making is very nearly done. So that's great. Um, and let's get started with today. Today is going to be all about the swatches that I've been making. Um, and I've got a few on my board to show you as well, which is normally up here. And I've got it here today. And it's also a little different in that I am recording myself doing a usual day in the, in the, the usual, let's get this right, my usual day, a day in the usual life of Heather from HGDC. Um, so I feel a little bit off in that there's another camera. Um, and also I have hay fever and my eyes and my nose and my throat and my ears and everything are itching and feel puffy and I can't find my mascara so my eyes do look a bit crap I just well, my eyes do look a bit puffy and oh well you just have to deal with it I have hay fever and I really need to sneeze all the time but I can't hay fever anyone so today, swatches, um, let me tell you why I'm doing so many swatches. So anyone that's been watching, you will know that I'm doing more of a minimalist streak journey. It's not a streak. I'm actually trying to change my lifestyle in that I have less and get more from those items in my life. Um, and one of my sort of big steps in doing that is using up my stash I have a lot of stash and I think with the vlog I'm recording I'm going to I think I'm going to show you through some of my stash and just just the magnitude of the stash um I don't I know there's a few other people out there like Pine Cottage who are also doing the more minimalist um take on life and there's a lot of people out there that I've found on Twitter and Instagram, I'm HGDC Crochet on Instagram, HGDC <coughs> Crow, C R O on Twitter. There's people out there like me that get this overwhelming sense of guilt and just how am I ever going to get through my stash? So I am now working on getting through my stash. Um, and that's been challenging in that. I have a lot of DK weight acrylic, which was fine when I was doing blankets um, because that is mainly what I always make. But now that I want to do more knitting and I want to make more me made garments, DK is okay, but I only have sort of one skein of a shade of whatever colour. Say, for example, yellow. I've got eight different shades of yellow DK, all different shades, and then not even a full skein on each. I really need to sneeze again. <laughs> Don't podcast with hay fever, guys. Oh my goodness. Ugh, I look like I want to cry. I just want to sneeze. So I've got lots of different DK that I need to use up. Um... I do want to buy sweater quantities of yarn, really nice yarn, and I've already said when I go to my next festival, yarn festival, I will buy some, but in the meantime, I'm using up what I've got. Um, some stash is being donated, 
for charity knitting, some I'm going to make for lap blankets for, for care homes, and others at the moment I am using to make um, baby cardigans for my friends and I might gift some to the hospital as well. But baby cardigans are only around 50 grams up, so it's not the biggest de stash item that I could be doing. But anyway, enough of the rambling. So that brings me on to swatches. I've got lots of DK, um, some of which is sweater quantity. So let's go into that straight away, show you some yarn. I've got this, which is a denim tweed. Now, it is something that my mother gifted me, and my first jump I ever completed was also gifted by my mother, that yarn. Um, it was in, she'd started making a project which she didn't want, I've ripped out. I haven't weighed it, but I can go grab the bag. Do you want to see how much of this there is? This is the DK tweed. Um, in 50 gram balls, there is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven full gram, full balls, sorry, with the band still on, and then all of these that have been frogged because they were part of a project. Now, I think 50, 100, 200, 300, 100. there's probably about 500 plus grams in there maybe 600 grams so because I have so much of that I want to make that into a cardigan or jumper of some sort um, and it's actually a really nice colour it's this denim and I know that's going to look great but I just don't know in my head what sort of project I want to do now with a little scrappy bit I've done this swatch it hasn't been blocked um, it's got a few knots in the back because I literally tied all the loose ends together in a magic knot. It didn't take it very well. Um, I think that looks really nice and I think that's just going to make a really nice... It's going to look really good. I just don't know what sort of shape I want. I can't even work out if I want it fitted or oversized. I think I want an oversized cardigan in this. No idea what buttons I'll use either. Um, so that's why I'm swatching, just so that I can see how it feels, how it looks. I mean, what do you think to the colour? I think it's really nice. It looks like a pair of jeans. I did then toy with the idea of, do I make some sort of shorts or a skirt out of it, because it is denim. I think it will look really nice in an oversized cardigan or like a shirt dress type pattern with like basic leggings under it, black um, and a little crop top and this in an oversized shirt. So thank you guys, I think that's what I'd like to make with it. Um, now you're going to ask me technical terms, I don't know about drape and positive ease and negative ease so if anybody wants to teach me these terms go ahead i know what raglan means now though because my mum jean she explained that to me that's where you've uh, got your seams there and your sleeves see i'm good at this stuff um it's quite stretchy it is quite light i think a shirt a dress that's an amazing idea will look really good um, I'm going to block this, I'm going to have a little blocking party after this and block all of these out and add them to my swatch board. Now, this is Sadar and it is their denim tweed and it's their classic denim lot, 154. Oh, see this says 500 grams in accordance with blah 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 blah. So maybe I have got 500, I'm going to weigh it. 60% acrylic, 25% cotton, 15% wool, and it's machine washable. And it does feel much, it has such a different feel to the usual DK, so compared to this, 
it feels more, I was going to say more woolly, because it has more wool in it. So that's the first swatch I've done this week. And we've just decided between us, DK shirt. So if you have any better suggestions what you think I should make with it, comment below, let me know, um, or send me links to Ravelry. And then also, if you know of any shirt type knits, I think that's something I have to make up myself, aren't I? Let me know because I would be very interested in that. Um, then let me show you, before we get too far in, my actual swatch board. So this one normally hangs below, and it's my cows, and it's got Isabel's heart on it at the moment. It's got a granny square that I made. That's come from um, the 400 plus granny squares that I've been working on, and it's got hair on it, it's Darcy's hair, half black, half white. Um, it's got my poppy that I made for Remembrance Day, I made that quite some years ago now. This square is the prototype square I made for um, Darm Circle Charm Blanket. Um, I never did do that tutorial on that. So that's, that ended up being a darker grey and it had navy and um, navy and dark purple centres in and I did an entire blanket and um, I'll see if I can find a picture to put in for you and that's just a simple glittery granny square I must have been trying out that yarn um, I do love my glitter <clears throat> and then also one here that was another prototype for this it's got a slightly different centre and I chose to do the granny, can you see the granny stripe goes around it in a circle as opposed to the spikes on that one because I felt that it just looked a bit more cohesive. Um, then this one, these are all the swatches for the... Uh, for the for Darm's mum's blanket. I think I called it Mama D, Mama D's blanket. So I did standard stripes, sorry my voice, hay fever strikes. Standard stripes, um, stripes in different different colourways. Then I played with doing the larger stripes because it would be less ends. And then I tried a stripe with the cream all the way through. Um, which actually I do really like, but I found it a bit fiddly. And in the end I settled on this. Um, which is just a simple granny stripe, two rows of each colour. Um, now when it comes to planning a new project, trying out a new project, making samples is so important and I don't know if anybody out there does it. It's not something that I religiously do and I don't always measure them but I find that it's really really useful for you to see how a project's going to build up to make something on a smaller scale and also you can always come back to them. So with this one I use the measurements on this for Mama D's blanket and I also used it to measure up for Snap's blanket because it gave me a basis, I measured that, worked out how much in my head how big I thought Snap's blanket should be and then multiplied that so it took out some of the harder work for me. Um, so I do keep most of my swatches, that's a few on there, that's sort of the overflow. <coughs> Put that out of the way and this oh, is my other swatch board at the moment. So the actual board is from Wilkinson's, I think, and it says creativity is fun, do something creative every day. Um, and I do try to crochet or knit every day. 
So it's got my old label on it. That's my old logo, HD Designs. And I had it printed on fabric at Spoonflower, maybe. Um, it's something that I'd like to get done again with my newer logo. The jeweled pins came from Wilco's as well. They look really nice. It's got a quote on it. Nevertheless, she persisted. I just think that's really fitting for a swatch board because your swatches don't always go to plan, but that's why it's a swatch. For you to see how it's how it's going to um, turn out. I've also got some receipts on there for some projects I've brought in the past. Um, right then, so where should we start? Hmm, let me put it down. I'll start with the ones that have fallen off or I haven't put on. So you've seen the swatch for my oversized jumper, my first ever me made jumper using the bamboo iron. I did a swatch, I'm going to say that I swatched it just to see how it looked, felt that it looked awful but persisted anyway and I didn't measure it um, purely because it's an oversized jumper um, I wasn't really bothered about the fit whereas if it's something more that you know that's supposed to have the fit then I'm going to have to measure it. Um, it will be interesting, I think I'm going to measure this just to see how it actually stands up to the tension swatch stated, the gorge swatch on the pattern. So that needs to stay on there. That's actually become a completed project. Now this is in all of its bright colours, the stabby, the stabby strap, the stabby granny square, which um is from Set Free My Gypsy Soul. She has so many amazing patterns. Um, she's been a bit quiet for a while, so I hope you're okay. But this was her own design in conjunction with somebody else. And she uses all of the colors on all of the glitter, so I used bright, bright colors for this. It's actually washing me out. Um, and I did want to turn that into some sort of sock pattern maybe, if possible. But it never went any further. Um, but I do think that it's always a good idea to try new stitch patterns. Um, and then that can just be added to my swatch catalogue, which is what I am slowly building up and which is what I'm showing you now. So then... This one with an olive green pin is my first ever attempt at corner to corner crochet. Um, and I vividly remember doing this. It was 2016. That is neon green, which is why I've got a funny colour. Um, it's neon green, navy blue, dark purple, lilac, lion green, and then back out again. Um, this took me, I don't know how many hours watching YouTube videos, it's just, I just couldn't get it for some reason and then I think at first I was trying a written pattern and I just couldn't get it and then I got a YouTube video and like that it was done and that from then on I've been a YouTube addict, the powers of YouTube and um, I've gone on to make a couple of corner to corner blankets That's a lie. I've started a couple of corner co to corner blankets, but it's not something that I've really, really enjoyed. Um, so I don't know. I just I've just not enjoyed it, so I haven't done much of it. Um, there, there is a half done blanket like this downstairs, which I've frogged and I'm gifting that yarn to my mum. So, but it's again, it's good to have that knowledge of a different stitch. Um, and I can decide how I might use that stitch in a garment, which is my end goal with all of these swatches. Um, then we've got this one with my DK Rose blush from Pound World. Um, it's my first attempt at cabling, which was then going to go into a pair of um, socks for a pattern that I'd got. In actual fact, I then ended up making my own pattern. Um, which was for the 
my green socks, which I've shown you all already. Ooh. So I've put the cable in on this now. Um, and an amazing viewer, a subscriber, came up with a pattern name. These are my lacy fern socks. Um, so yes, cable swatching. It's just a, because it's such a little small swatch, it meant that I could try cabling but not on a big scale and also because it was on this, it didn't matter if it went wrong rather than it being in my project. Um, now let's move on to this one. This is a never ending granny square and I've used scraps which is why the colour seems to bleed round to it. I I stopped doing this one because I feel that the centre should be all one colour and then it bleed out because I just feel like I can't follow the pattern. It looks messy. Um, but that was one way that I was looking at using my scraps. And I have seen a lot of never-ending granny squares. But they just go round and round and round and they look great but I just... I just didn't take to that, so that's another swatch that I've tried. Um, this one is crochet again. It was my attempt at crochet ribbing. I don't like crochet ribbing to the point where if I crochet a top, anything, I think I'm going to knit the ribbing because that doesn't look like ribbing. just doesn't. Um, maybe I should have done it on a, a wider so that I could actually wrap it round as a cuff and see. But again, tried the stitches, feel it doesn't work so I found an alternative. Um, now we've got this one. That was my attempt at using up some scraps and it's my first ever try at um, mini granny squares. I really like that and I actually think that I should use that in another project. Can you see I'm, I'm thinking of projects now. I think that would look really good for a Kindle cover or an iPad cover or even one of my project bags um, rather than doing multicoloured like that you could have the white centres. Um, it's just the ends that put me off. Look at that. These were um, bunting triangles that I used from a book a while ago that I borrowed from a friend. And um, these were actually out of the book. Oopsie. And I've never crocheted in the triangular like that. So that was really good to see how it works. And this one I made up myself and that then became my bunting pattern. Um, if you go back on my Instagram there's definitely pictures on there. And I made my own bunting from that, quite a lot of bunting. And then these ones were just swatches. I started a jumper at Christmas and crochet. Um, which I then put aside because I, I had a block. I couldn't see how I was going to put it together. But I actually worked that out the other day. And I'm going to pick that up at some point and get it ready to show you all. Get it ready, done for next Christmas. Maybe a bit earlier, like October so or something like that. So you can all make your own versions. So, swatch catalogue so far. Now there's a couple of guys on Instagram, uh, no, Twitter, just looking for my phone. Let me get my phone. Oh, I could just put their name in. So there's a couple of guys on Twitter, they have a huge swatch catalogue. Um, and it's just, I just feel that it's really important to know how different balls different yarns build up so for example I'd quite like to crochet some of this just to see what it feels like 
um, and also because it's got that cotton in the wool and the acrylic it's got a different feel and it's just nice to see how it builds up equally I've got there's a little scrap of it here let me show you the actual yarn this burgundy I'm crocheting it at the moment because I'm making my clutch bag but I want to see what it's like knitted and have a knitted swatch so swatching 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 which brings me to the most amazing swatch I've ever made um, it's in white and it's got Darcy hair on it as usual now there's an Instagram account which I'll put their name on the screen because I'm not even going to try and say it um, which I came across and they do knitting with beads now I used to make jewellery I've got lots and lots of beads and I love mixed multi um, media projects so when I saw their work I had to give it a go so this is the most amazing swatch I'm sorry if it's got Darcy hair on it so I've took a plain white and again it needs blocking and I've put beads throughout it doesn't it look amazing so cute um, at the bottom I went really heavy and then I've dispersed it all the way up I don't like the really heavy I've crammed it in too much it needs to be spaced out more but I do like the really dispersed where it comes up it gets more spread out as it go up so for this I would like to either make a jumper my only thing is I don't think having the beads against my skin is going to feel the nicest I need to wash this swatch and see how it comes out I'm not making a jumper in it for it to not be washable um, it's going to be a hand wash isn't it or I want to make like a crop top or a vest top with the more sparse spread out across the across the, the words across the vest or make a normal jumper whatever normal is a simple jumper pattern but put bead detailing across the shoulders or as a collar so many ideas has anybody ever tried knitting with beads? I found, I put dangles in just to see, this was a try everything out type one. I found the ones that sit the best are the smaller circle little beads. Like those, they sit better. The bigger ones like that, they do sit well, but on the back, they come through a lot more. So that's what I'll feel on my skin. Let me just show it to you guys. What do you all think? Um, I'm definitely going to carry on with it. I did start a second swatch where I was putting beads in and eyelets. Um, only I was half asleep. I didn't want to put it down and made a mistake. So I frogged the whole thing to start again. So that's another swatch in my catalogue. And from that I've got maybe three garment ideas. So what do you want to see? Jumper, vest or sort of a normal garment with the beading detail? I'm leaning towards the beading detail and I'm also leaning towards the vest top. Um, I, th I think for me my problem is, is I don't feel that I have enough experience to make my own plans yet. Um, designs yet yeah, I don't have enough I can't find a design out there I want to do so I either waste my time keep looking and moan I can't find it or I just crack on and start one so yes that's my swatch catalogue um, I need some more pins to put these ones on they're probably going to go there I don't need more pins, there's loads of pins on here. Um, and then 
no, I need to block a couple and wash them a bit. They can go in here for now. Hmm. So, I've got a couple more swatches to do. And then I think I'm going to now go find the pattern for these. Because now that we've spoke it through, I know what I want to make. Um, hopefully I'll be able to show you a couple more swatches each week now as I go along. But I just wanted to sit there and go through the ones I've got. And just say why I think it's a good idea to do it. Because I know quite a few of you are like me in that you haven't made garments or your very early days. Um, and even if you don't want to make a garment, I find it a good idea to swatch for... Um, blankets, for example, on the Mama D blanket, that helped me determine what um, colour repeat I wanted to do because you actually see it out there. Now, some people use pegs and they put the colour on, and everyone's got their own way of doing it, but I really like to just do a little mini swatch. Um, so that I know going forward what I, how it's going to build up. I am a very visual person and I do need to see it. Um, and also, because I'm exploring more yarn, it's good to fit, see how it feels, how it how it works up. Um, if this had been a bit more heavier, a bit chunkier, then I might not have gone for the more the shirt look because it wouldn't have had that hang. So, swatching is your friend. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm wasting my yarn doing this, but I know I'm not because I can look back at all of my swatches now and I can blend different techniques to get what I want out of it to um, make new items. And it does look so pretty. So that's swatching. Um, today I'm also recording my... <laughs> I'm also recording my day as a, my usual Sunday, sort of a, a follow me. I haven't thought of the name, can you tell? Um, I've got my question A coming next weekend with the giveaway items. I've also got um, additional, so there's been so many questions which is great and some of them are going to be their own videos because they need their own time. Um, and also I've got a few other videos planned but if there's anything that you do want to see whether it be tutorials or um, particular items let me know if you go back to the 100 subscriber vlog and put your comment on there requesting a video then you could be entered into my giveaway as well um, and if you have any swatch tips for me then let me know some people label their swatches and I think as mine get a bit bigger, I might need to label, like I could do with labelling this, um, and just noting what it is. Or I might do that in my journal. So I don't know, organising swatches, is, is that a thing? Can you help me? Um, so yes, thank you for watching my slightly rambly, sorry, podcast with puffy eyes. Um, I'm now going to sit in the garden, so if and when you can, jump onto the vlog. Is it weird? Like, you're going to be watching it from both angles if you go watch this. Um, go follow that. Go watch that, rather. Um, let me know what other videos you want. Have a really, really good weekend. If you've liked this video, then give it a thumbs up, subscribe. Thank you so much for all of you that are subscribing. Um, thank you so much to the Pine Cottage. Thank you for my little shout out. I think that's where everybody's come from. Um, and I love your bookshelves. They look great. I am jealous. Um, I want to be in that room. I wish you didn't live so far away. So, thank you for watching. Happy making, memories making moments. <laughs>